Hey guys, welcome to my home. Welcome to my apiary today. Thanks for joining me. I'm David Burns. Got some cool things to share with you guys that I haven't really talked about before, but they play an important part in beekeeping. And that is making sure that you resolve problems with your equipment. What do you do when it gets propolized, as you can see here? The potential of disease being spread with your hive tool getting real dirty like this one here is. Or that your smoker becomes so creosoted on the inside that it doesn't really smoke good anymore. The other thing is, what do you do when your gloves get dirty? And then finally, what do you do when your bee suit doesn't look beautiful anymore like you wanted it to? Let's get started. Now, you used to have some beekeeper inspectors that walked around and did inspections on my hives and after they were done they would throw their hive tools in their smoker the heat of the smoker and they were feeling like that the heat fire of the smoker would kind of burn off any maybe american foul brood spores stuff like that and that they they wouldn't transfer from one bee yard to the next well that probably is uh, helpful. I don't know if that's completely guaranteed because sometimes the fire in the smoker really isn't hot enough if it's a smoldering smoke to actually burn off any potential spread of bacteria from like American foul brood, European foul brood, uh, maybe, maybe not. So it's not, a, it's not good enough for me to feel that way. Um, instead, you know, I do have different hive tools that I dedicate to different yards. They don't cross just in case there is something going on that I don't know about. But like I use this hive tool in my uh, studio hives here. I got about 20 hives that I use to make beekeeping videos here at my home. And uh, that, that doesn't, uh, that, that's different than the bees we keep for our packages and different than the bees that we use for our, our nucle nucleuses. So, um, but here I can manage um, my hives here with one dirty, filthy hive tool. But I wanna show you today how I would clean this hive tool. Uh, look at this hive tool. It's not the prettiest thing that uh, we've seen. Now, I typically, for the most part, don't get too excited about a dirty hive tool when I'm using it on the same hives in the same apiary. But one of the ways that I feel that if you want to keep it looking good and not let it get, you know, such a bad look like mine, use some alcohol like this. Now I'm using some alcohol that's 91%. You can use alcohol that's probably more effective. I've got some that's about 99% alcohol. So, you know, the higher the number, like you're not going to get much, uh, potency out of 50% uh, alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, something like that. Let's use something that is a little more powerful, like in the 90s to 99% alcohol. And that's going to help break this wax and propolis and dried honey down significantly, but not as much as you would think. So what you might want to first do is take another dirty hive tool <laughs> and actually see if you can scrape off a big part of it. Look at that. It just rolls off. I mean, that is insane, isn't it? Just by putting a little alcohol on there, it just, just makes it look so pretty again because it's just diluting. Then you can take something like a steel wool or something and knock off any remaining uh, places that may be stained or something like that, and you can shine it up very nicely as well. And that way, uh, it, it keeps the hype tool looking pretty sharp. Let's try the other side. Again, these J-hook hive tools, they do have a very sharp end to them. And that's why I'm able to knock all this uh, old wax and propolis right off of them. Look at that. Even the paint, I can almost take the paint off. Now, it might be a little tougher down on the edge where you might have to really uh, get down there and scrub it good with your steel wool. And you have it, some of you are probably tired of seeing my filthy hive tools. After you get most of it knocked off, just take your paper towel or a shop towel or something. And there you go, you got it all cleaned up, uh, just like a new one. Doesn't that look nice? I don't know what to do with myself. I've never had a hive tool <laughs> this nice. <laughs> because uh, normally for me, it doesn't matter. I was like, hey, grab a hive tool, let's get going. Be sure and clean off the edges, I forgot to do that. But uh, that thing is just shiny and gorgeous. Now let's clean up some other stuff. 
Now, as we continue to clean up some equipment here, be sure and hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Appreciate that a lot. I love you guys and love you being part of my YouTube channel. So uh, that's great. Let's talk about the smoker, how to clean this thing up because I've had smokers that they stop working as efficiently, even though everything is uh, you know still repaired well, nothing's worn out. But what happens is inside the actual canister, I started developing this, uh, creosote, this uh, debris of the fire itself. And you can see, if you get it really up close to that, you can see how it has formed uh, friction and it just builds up until I've actually had the, the hole at the end of this little funnel snoot actually get down to like a pencil size opening. And that's going to cut down on my airflow a lot. And not so much in here because you can, you can deal with that, but I find regularly that I need to clean this out. But here are two areas of the smoker. Now this is heavy use. Some of you are brand new beekeepers. It's not that bad yet. But the problems that I have the most with my smoker is sure, you wanna knock down the inside wall a little bit, but this rim is really important because you want a very good seal when you close this lid. And so I think you can take a, a nice clean hive tool <laughs> and you can actually start uh, scraping off the extra black stuff around the edges, but not just this area here, but also around right here. If it builds up and it's not making a good seal anymore, it's because this is holding the, the chance of it sealing good. And I know we're kind of getting technical. You know, a lot of you might be thinking, that's stupid, I don't want to mess with that. My smoker works fine. But you know, take a moment and just kind of keep your equipment in good repair, especially if you start developing issues with it. Now this is the new smoker and you can see already it's, it is starting to build up. Now once you do the um, outside of the canister, be sure and do the inside of this lid because that's where stuff develops. Now this is the biggest problem that I'm wanting you guys to see right here is you need to scrape along the inside and knock down anything that's built up preventing the seal and then get in here and scrape all of this stuff out that's kind of tall. You can see that it's gotten to be a, quite a problem. So you want to get it down, knock down. You can use different tools, uh, screwdrivers, whatever you need to do to get down all the way down and get a lot of this stuff cleared out. But you can see right here, it may not close well because I've got a buildup that's already causing it not to, not to seal off good. Like right there, see I got a big chunk of black stuff off that would keep it from sealing good. And I think that's gonna help you a lot if you can just take a moment, um, not, not every time, but you know, once a month or something, just go through here and kind of knock down all this carbon stuff that's built up from smoker fuel. Different fuel leaves a lot of this behind and certainly my, my burlap does. So that, that's one way to get that smoker really cleaned up inside on the outer rim. Now let's talk about cleaning up some other stuff. Now I promised you guys that uh, we would talk about how to clean uh, any kind of a propolis or a wax buildup on my feeding systems. This happens when you actually leave them on the hive a little longer than you should have. But hey, nobody's perfect, not even me. <laughs> and uh, I pulled this one off, left it on the hive way too long. And this is more wax than it is propolis, but it can be either. And so one of the ways that I have found that's really helpful to get rid of this is to, again, take your alcohol in the 90s, 91, 99% alcohol, you know, percent and just kind of put some alcohol on that wax right there. I like using it because it dries pretty quick so you don't have to worry about chemicals hurting your bees. It just evaporates out but you can let that soak a minute and once you kind of get that alcohol on there it starts to break down the propolis or the wax a little bit and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this because some of you have had this happen. Now this happens to me when I stop feeding them and it's just sitting on there empty without any uh, food on there. They don't have a use for it and they just start, you know, propolizing it or waxing it up. And you can see already it's starting to break uh, some of this down. So once you put that on there, um, it, it kind of cools it. It kind of makes it uh, a little easier to get off. And so you leave it on there just a minute, wipe it off if you want to. 
But what you do next is just, you know, take your new pretty hive tool or something. And it's amazing, watch this. You can actually do use your finger, but if you start scraping it like this, watch how easy it comes off. You ready? Look at that. It's amazing. It just comes right off by a little scraping. Now, if you let the alcohol sit down there a little bit longer, it will come off even easier. <laughs> so I, I kind of jumped the gun just for the sake of the video to show you uh, it works really well. But I, I let some of this sit on there for 10 or 15 minutes and I can actually just use my finger like this after, after letting it soak a little bit longer and it comes off that easy. Isn't that incredible? These are great tips, aren't they? Man, yeah. I know that some of you were asking me, what do I do if this gets kind of propolized or waxed up like that? Yeah, and again, the important thing is try to get it off the hive before the bees are, are, you know, kind of done using it. That way they won't do that. Now it's time for me to talk to you about these gloves. Now look how yucky they look. They got a lot of propolis on them and built up of stuff. This really isn't so much of a problem until you start uh, a hot summer day and you get this propolis that starts getting gooey and now you're sticking to stuff. So if you want to clean your gloves up, a neat way to do it is using the same alcohol again that we have. I'm using 91% alcohol and you can put it on your gloves. Get some shop towels, the blue shop towels. And I don't think I have any on me here, but uh, I don't know where they went. But if you can just start knocking this down with the alcohol and then get your shop towels and start um, rubbing it off with some shop towels or an old rag. You know, you got an old rag that you're not using anymore. Uh, here's some paper towels just out of the kitchen. Paper towels aren't bad. They can be a little bit too thin sometimes and start falling apart on you. But it's just like when you get propolis on your hands. If you work your bees without gloves, you'll get these uh, globs of propolis on your fingers. And when I work bees without my gloves on and I get all that propolis on my hands, the first thing I do is come inside and wash my hands in alcohol first. And uh, just be careful if you're sensitive to alcohol, you don't want to uh, kind of damage or injure your skin using alcohol. It can dry out your hands but you can see you can knock a lot of it down and make them a little less uh, of a problem. Now, to make this really effective, what you wanna do is not wear your gloves for two years and get a two inch thick blob of propolis all over your gloves and then try to solve it like I'm doing today. There's a big glob right here that's gonna take more work. But if you do this you know, every once a month, for example, you can keep these rubber gloves really nice looking. Now the other thing that some of you talk about the gloves, I've got a pair of yellow gloves. The chemical resistant yellow gloves that I've shown on videos and they're always in the link in my description where you can buy them. But the yellow gloves smell. Let's just be honest. When you work and sweat in them, it's something about the, the sweat of our hands that make those really smell bad. Even these become sweaty or wet and my hands really don't sweat but it retains the moisture from my body in there. So here's a little trick you should do when you want your gloves to be in a better shape. If you've ever worked bees and you had to take your gloves off on a hot day, then you have to put them back on. They're almost impossible to put back on because they're so wet. So what I like to do is take the glove off, start where you pull your fingers out just about a half inch gap at the end, and then take the glove and just turn it inside out like this. And by doing that, you're going to create a place where all of this um, canvas on the inside stays, uh, it gets a chance to air out. So that's all I'm trying to do is, and you can use that on the yellow gloves too and make them not smell as bad. Uh, you can't really get the fingers to come all the way out uh, without doing a little bit more work. But anyway, it will help everything dry out a little bit better. And then you can reach in here and pull the fingertips down and set it back up. This is the great tip just to let these things dry out between usage. Okay, finally, I wanna talk about the bee suit. I know a lot of you want to go beekeeping into the bee yard and you're wanting to beekeep in style. You wanna look really nice. In the day, we've sold a lot of pink bee suits, green bee suits, blue bee suits. It, it became really famous a few years back when people thought, I want something more stylish than just white. And the thing about bee suits is you only wear them in one place, and that's usually 
in the bee yard, right? Are you trying to be stylish just for your bees? Because, you know, they really don't care. But this suit, I've worn it quite a few years, and it really doesn't look that bad. Now, I have a friend that's an EAS Master Beekeeper with me, and his name is Kent Williams from Kentucky. Some of you know Kent. Now, Kent has probably the most, shall we say, dirty, messy, uh, propolis bee suit I think of anyone I've ever seen. Now, I don't know if that's a new bee suit every year because he keeps a lot of hives. It could be. But nonetheless, uh, if you're trying to keep these things looking nice, it's going to be next to impossible. Because when you get a bunch of propolis on here, and you're just not going to be able to wash that off. You can try everything. It's just not going to happen. Now, a lot of you are seeing this piece of black tape and you're saying, oh, David got a hole in his bee suit. That's cool because I use black tape, duct tape, Gorilla tape to seal off the hole. No, there's no hole there. You know what this is for? This is preventative in case I get a big tear in my screen or I get a big tear in my bee suit while I'm in the yard. I just take this off. It's there in holding and I can take it off. It's still very sticky. See, there's nothing there. And I can cover up a hole. I don't have to go get the tape or take it off the roll or anything. I can be in my suit. Isn't that a great idea? These tips you guys are learning from me are insane, aren't they? I was like, I never thought about that. Have some Gorilla Tape, or if I need it for the hive or something. If I find a, a problem in the hive, maybe a corner busted out or something, I can just slap some Gorilla Tape on the corner till I can make a more permanent fix. Now I've got a bonus cleaning tip for you guys, and that is your feeding jars. Look at that. Sometimes you have feeding jar problems where all at once the bees have put a lot of propolis or a lot of wax up on the jar. And you want to sometimes take that off and kind of hold it up to the sun to determine if these holes are plugged up or if they're useful. I like using the alcohol 91 to 99 percent, it kind of it's going to help break down the hardness of the propolis or the wax that's built up on these. And the good thing about it is you're going to let it evaporate out and dry it off. Maybe wash it with some soapy water, you know, before you get it back uh, around your bees a lot. But the more you put on there, let it soak a little bit, uh, the stronger the alcohol, it is going to weaken, break down the bond of the wax and the, and the propolis as well. And so once you let that sit a little bit, you can use something like a rag, a hive tool, even like a stainless steel, and you can just start uh, knocking it off, scraping it, clearing the holes out. Okay, so here's my hand, here's my thumb, here's thumbs up. If you give me a thumbs up, click on thumbs up or like down below, it helps my video so much and I appreciate it. I love you guys, thumbs up please. And after a while, no more expensive than these are, I'm okay with just replacing them after two or three years. You can open up the holes a lot better and just knock out, knock out some of these uh, holes that are plugged up. Now, if the holes stay plugged up after you've cleaned off the outside, I recommend taking something like a nail or a drywall screw or something. And you don't have to make the holes any bigger. You just try to want to just try to knock out whatever's blocking them. Yeah, but you get the idea. Pretty typical stuff. Knock off the, the bulk of it. Uh, use alcohol to kind of clean it, scrape it off, and then you can use your uh, nail or something to open these holes back up. So many of you have been wanting to get into B Team 6, a mentorship, coaching, beekeeping program that I developed seven years ago. It's been full, but we made some changes. We're opening it up for more of you to join. So look at the link in the description below and sign up for B Team 6. I want to give you a secret, a kind of a disappointing moment maybe for you, but when you email the website, you're not talking to me. My staff tries to answer your questions. A lot of you always say, Dear David, or thanks for answering my question, David. I'm sorry, I just can't do that. There's too many emails coming in. Hundreds a day. Thank you for trying. But if you want to talk to me directly, easy way to do it, you can talk to me on live stream on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. You can ask me questions there. Or be a part of my B Team 6 mentorship program, which we made some changes and opened it up for a while. So now more members can join. You've been waiting, you've been asking, you've been wanting to be put on a wait list for B Team 6. Sign up before it closes, B Team 6. Also, I want to tell you about June tips. Things you should be doing in the month of June. I'm pumped and excited, as you can tell. I don't want you to miss out and make June mistakes. Here's a video on what you should be doing 
in the month of June. Guys, see you over there.